I'm Ian Thomas with Front Office Sports. I'm joined by Ben Reynolds, CEO and co-founder of Spark. Let's talk a little bit about commentators. You guys are doing something really interesting, bringing a new level of fan engagement around broadcasting, providing some new voice. Tell me a little bit about the impetus for this idea. What made you come up with the, with the idea behind the company? So Spork, so we're, we're what we call a, a virtual commentary studio. So we're helping leagues, teams and broadcasters easily produce multiple different tracks for any one of their live broadcasts. And the way we do that is with a, a virtual studio sitting in the cloud. That means commentators can call games from home rather than having to fly to the venue. So working with leagues like the NBA G League, World Rugby, FIBA, um, a ton of Olympic sports and federations and, and really helping them just talk to more fans um, in different styles and in, in different languages and things like that. What sort of properties do you find gain the most from working with you guys? Is it, is it some of those younger, platform, younger properties that are looking to grow their platform? Is it opportunity for bigger ones to maybe speak to a little bit of a different audience? Sure, so our, our sweet spot has been multilingual. Um, so the obvious opportunity, particularly here in, in the US, is, is the Spanish-English um, opportunity for sports leagues. We, we do a lot in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, so the Hockey Federation, the Triathlon Federation, World Rugby, FIBA, a ton of these um, Olympic sports who are producing content for a global fan base, but it's just too costly for them to fly three different commentary teams to every single event they're producing. Um, and so they end up using our system to make it really simple to have the French commentator sitting in Paris and the, the English commentator sitting in New York and the Spanish commentator in Europe, for example. Say I wanted to become a commentator of hockey in Europe. I mean, how? Walk me through a little bit how you break through that barrier and, and, and how you get up to speed on that front. Sure. So all of our commentators are trained professionals. So we've got a real sweet spot with, um, they're sort of known as the world feed commentators. Mm. So if you've ever, if you've ever watched, um, I don't know, badminton at the Olympics, NBC is not going to put a dedicated badminton commentator on, they'll take the world feed commentator mm -hmm. because it's a, sec a secondary sport in, in the US, but people still want to watch with, with English commentary. So they'll have a, a commentator who's sitting on in venue doing the English commentary. So most of our commentators come from that, that freelance world. Mm -hmm. um, we've got over 5,000 commentators spanning 50 languages um, who are all professionals and all we do is match make content owners to, to talent, really. Um, and then they're using our software to do the commentary. Uh, what are the inroads you've made with, with US leagues and, and teams thus far? I know you mentioned the, the G League sort of thing, but what's your sort of pitch to, to leagues here in terms of why, to your point, why they might want a Mandarin broadcaster if they were NASCAR? Uh, for, for a Chinese audience. Sure, so the, the US is an interesting market where traditionally sports rights are more heavily produced than, than overseas. And so we assume that the same sales pitch that we use in Europe, which is multilingual world feed um, fan engagement, would, would work mm -hmm. the same here. What we've found is we've had to adapt the pitch quite a bit for the US and North American market. Um, it's the fan engagement piece is more important. The influencer commentary is more important. The, the athlete oriented commentary is more important. And then the diversity of the commentary lineup is also an important part of the pitch, whether it's having a, an all female broadcast team or a, um, a youth broadcast team and things like that. So we've had to go and forge partnerships with the likes of Syracuse and then Newhouse School of Journalism to say, hey, we've got a, a great crop of young talent coming through. We're making sure that we're really diverse in terms of the, um, the, the, the genders and the ages and the types of, of commentators we bring on board. So for us, it's all about um, diverse voices and providing a way for, for the leagues in North America to drive more fan engagement. Is there, is, is there a, when it comes to having a more engaged fan like that and, and, and having them wanting to be part of a broadcast like this, is there, are there certain characteristics you think about that they embody that, that lend themselves to come to you? I mean, to, is it, to your point, is it being maybe a, multilingual in a way that doesn't automatically you know, go to that sport, if you will? Sure, I mean, co commentary is hard. It's a, it's a real skill, right? And I think coming, coming into this, a lot of people expect that, hey, you can just hand a former player the microphone and they should be able to commentate. They, they know what's happening on the field. It should be, it should be easy. In, in practice, you need a lot of time and a lot of experience doing time behind the microphone, getting used to 
how you're telling a story throughout the game, understanding who the players are and um, what they've been doing for um, sort of all their training and what their form's like and things like that. So we've found we've had to spend a lot more time on skills development for commentators okay. and you can't expect uh, um, a former athlete to come straight onto the microphone and, and perform. So I think what a, what a lot of leagues are, are looking at us for is one, not only the fan engagement piece but also as a way to do talent recruitment and talent management. Um, so, I mean, a league like the MLS, right, where they're producing all their commentaries off-site in a facility in Florida, um, it's saying, hey, well, we, can we help develop some more local talent um, for a league like the MLS or, or USL? So suddenly they can have a, a dedicated Austin FC voice who is the commentator for that team because they know that area and they can commentate directly from that location. You're seeing more leagues take control of their own rights in a lot of ways produce their own content, to your point, obviously to reach fans in, in, in deeper and, and create more touch points around that. I'm sure that lends itself well to property like yours where you kind of can really help facilitate that conversation and run with those rights if the, if the opportunity sort of arise there. I think it's it's going back to that earlier point of the virtual production stack. Producing content is, is tumbling and then at the same time, leagues are wanting to form direct relationships with other than say, hey, IMG, can you just worry about it and give us the check? So, so I mean, a league like World Rugby, who's, who's a good partner of ours, we've covered sort of 200 hours of, of rugby in the past two or three months um, with them. Uh, they're going and saying, we can see a pathway to introduce a fan in, let's say, Uruguay to, to, to the game of rugby. We know that if they watch a game with a Spanish broadcaster, they're going to watch for longer. We're then able to either sell them tickets, we're sell, able to sell them merchandise, or we're able to get them to turn up to a, a, a participation or a, um, a community engagement event that we'll, we'll have in that market at, at some point in the next few months. So they're seeing that multilingual commentary as a way to achieve a whole lot of different goals for their organisation and just own that relationship uh, directly with their fans um, rather than offloading it to a, to a third party broadcaster to, to worry about.